Good evening, everyone. How are we tonight? <laughs> Good to hear. So, yes, my name is Tarek. I'm from Australia, but I, I live in Dublin now. So, um, yeah, I first came to Ireland over 20 years ago for a visit. Thank you. I reckon I came back about 10 years ago on holiday again, and then I moved to Dublin last year to live. And I must say that the women in Ireland are just getting more and more attractive each time. Which sounds so much nicer, doesn't it? Then, immigration is on the rise. <laughs> no! Kidding of God. I told them not to let in so many beautiful women tonight, because that joke doesn't work. <laughs> so, who's having a real drink tonight? Uh, I'm not. I'm on the old uh, water. Boring. Yeah, I'm trying to be good and I'm off the booze at the moment. Which is hard as a comedian because I like to come on stage drinking a beer, you know. Makes me feel like I'm out there having a drink with you guys. But also, have you noticed that like a lot of comedians use their beer as a punchline cue, you know. Especially after a cheesy joke like this. So, uh, so my grandmother, right, is schizophrenic, and she's got voices in her head. But she's really old, and she's deaf, so she can't hear them. <laughs> you see how that works? It lets you guys know when to laugh. <laughs> but it doesn't really work with water, so, yeah, I think that's really unfair on us comedians that are trying to be good and not drink. What am I supposed to do? To come up here and improvise. So I was hanging out with my niece the other day, right? She's a cute kid. She's about eight years old, right? And she was telling me all about fairies. And I had to break it to her. I say, like, oh, look, I'm sorry, Francesca, but, like, I don't believe in fairies. <laughs> so then she goes, she's, like, shocked. She's like, Uncle Terry, when you say... You don't believe in fairies? <laughs> a fairy dies. Did you know that? I didn't know that. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, well, if that's how it works then. All right. Well, then I don't believe in the Kardashians. <laughs> I don't believe in my mother-in-law. I don't believe in some of my jokes. <laughs> ah, it's good fun. Hey, don't judge. It's hard not drinking, huh? Yes, it is. So I know what some of you are thinking. Did he just rack up using a link card? <laughs> yes, I did. No, I don't want to brag or anything, but uh, yeah, I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> I know what uh, some of you were also thinking. What's an Aussie doing? Coming to our country and telling jokes. And it's a good point, right? Because like the Irish are quite well known for having a good sense of humour, and being very funny. So, you know, I'm aware as a foreigner that like moving to Ireland to do comedy, well, that would be like, you know, like moving to Italy to make pizzas, wouldn't it? You know, or, or moving to America to shoot school children. <laughs> no, because this is a lot of really tough competition. <laughs> and it's hard to be the best. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Has anyone been to Australia? Yeah. Yes. Woo! Woo! Who knows the name of the big red rock in the middle of the country? Very good. Cool. We heard Nas Rock here and we got Uluru here. Yeah, so it's got two names. You, you can picture it, right? So Uluru is the traditional Aboriginal name, right? But when I went to school in Australia in the 80s, we didn't learn any of that. We got taught that it's called Ayers Rock because it was named after the English explorer that discovered it in 1873. Discovered! You seen the size of this thing? <laughs> As if for 50,000 years, the Aborigines have just never noticed it. <laughs> They're like scratching their heads going, I haven't bloody looked over there, mate. I 
lucky Mr. Bloody Englishman came out and pointed that thing out. Someone could have chipped over that in the mud. Could have been dangerous. Oh, the English helping out wherever they go. So I want to tell you about the first time I met some uh, Scots, right? Any Scots? Ah, they're good crack. So it was actually in Thailand, right? Which is Thailand for Australians is like, um, that's like your Ibiza, yeah? So yeah, it's where we go to embarrass ourselves. <laughs> so I was there with these, um, with these Scottish lads and we all got really pissed together. And they thought it'd be a great idea to all go and get tattoos when we're like really drunk. And this one guy wants to get freedom for Scotland and a thistle tattooed on his arm because it's their national flower, right? Um, with a Thai tattoo art. He doesn't know what a thistle is. He's in the tropics. Yeah, so they're trying to describe it to him. That's a slicky fluid. <laughs> you like my accent, huh? Yeah, yeah, well, you should hear you guys try to say it. He's learned it all from home and away. He's not like our steward. So anyway, yeah, they can't describe what a, what a thistle is to this guy. And he ends up getting tattooed on his arm, and this is a true story because I met these guys, freedom for Scotland and a pineapple. <laughs> Which is, yeah, it is one of the better tattoo fails around. Oh, God love him. So you know when you've um you know when you've been doing lots of yoga, right? And you, you get like really you get like flexible enough that you can give yourself a blowjob. Yeah? <laughs> Wasn't looking specifically at you and that's that. <laughs> but here's a little tip, right? Don't stop there. Keep going to yoga because if you get even more flexible, you can do what I do, right? And before you give yourself a blowjob, you actually bend right over and sit on your own head until it goes numb, because then it feels like someone else is doing it. <laughs> it's my version of the numb arm one. Yeah, you're welcome. Namaste. So, um, <clears throat> who's heard that game, Shoot, Shag, Marry? A few people? Okay, so for those who haven't, it's this game, right, where I would give you three names, and it could be anyone, but let's say Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, and Obama. And then you have to choose which one of them you would shoot, one of them that you'd shag, and the other one you'd marry, right? And that's the game, then you give me three names. So back in Australia, I was a high school teacher, and <laughs> you laughed at that. <laughs> I overheard some of my students playing this game once, right? And they gave me as one of the options. Yeah, I know, along with the sleazy PE teacher and the geriatric principal. And they didn't know that I was eavesdropping. So I'm like, I want to hear this. This is going to be interesting. So, you know, they asked this year 10 girl, come on, who would just shoot, shag and marry? And she said, without missing a beat, I would shoot myself. <laughs> She's a school shooting, I think, even the Americans. Hey, listen, you guys have been great. Enjoy your uh, last night.